All right, folks, how's it going? Welcome back to another adventure in my garage or the garage. Okay, so what are we doing today? Today I'm gonna to go over the process of how to install a seatbelt in your Cadillac XTS. Uh, note on this job, the shop rule of thumb, anything safety related has to be brand new from the dealer. However, we're making an exception for this because seat belts are on national back order and it could be up to like six months to get the part. So I've made the executive decision to go with a salvaged part. A couple things that I'll check with it and lastly after it's installed I'll go in and make sure the safety restraint system is happy with the seat belt and I know it'll deploy in an accident. I wanted to go over a few projects that I've done on this car that I unfortunately didn't videotape for you guys. This customer I've had for about a year. They first came in for a check engine light. It was just the EVAP purge solenoid, but that's really common on pretty much any car. Then the next complaint to address was clunking. Now there's a bulletin for this vehicle for struts for a clunk sound. So we did front and rear struts first. Clunking was still present. So then I did the front lower control arms. I sourced, I believe from not a sponsor, GMPartsGiant.com. I use them a lot instead of going through a local dealer because it's basically like wholesale prices. But also another tip, if you're working on GM products, Chevy GM, uh, Cadillac, uh, AC Delco is another great brand that you know makes parts for them that you can get too. The rear, Strut assembly, you don't need any special parts for, or tools, excuse me. The front struts, there's some special tooling that you'll need to source. You should be able to rent it from O'Reilly's. Um, I got a set from my tool guy. He hooked me up with a pretty good deal. Let me, um, let me find that tool, and so I can get you guys at least maybe a part number. Okay, so the kit I use for the front struts is a Steelman Pro 78554. It's a 39 piece strut shock installation tool kit. It's a really cool kit. I can't remember exactly which bits and pieces I use, but this kit basically allows you to simultaneously use like, as an example, maybe a Torx and a socket at the same time. But it was a great kit, worked perfect for those front struts. But I'm sure if you're crafty, uh, you could rig something up so you wouldn't have to get a kit like this. But I wouldn't get a kit like this, obviously, unless like you're, you work on cars every day like I do. That was a bummer to run into with the front struts. I had never seen that before. I just wanted to go over what was done. So yeah, now we're gonna take care of the seat belt. I've already done the passenger side like a month ago. And then I'm hearing a, a, mi uh, a mild exhaust leak. So we're gonna go through the process of diagnosing that and then I'll get her a quote. So. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, first things first. First thing, <laughs> first thing you want to do whenever you work on your airbags or really generally any kind of electronics in the car, you always want to disconnect the battery. With the safety restraint system, you know there's a chance that you could deploy the airbags or seat belts. So best practice: disconnect the battery for at least a few minutes. Generally, a manufacturer, like if you look through service data, will have the recommended time of battery disconnect. Going through service data on this Cadillac, I wasn't able to find any, but at least a few minutes should be fine. And funny side story: when I worked at the dealership, you know we were in such a rush. You know, there's always a a lot of airbag and safety recalls, and we used to do. You know, I used to do airbags probably at least once or twice a week, and we would just do them live, you know, with the battery hooked up, which is really stupid and potentially dangerous, but that's what you do when you work on flat rate. So there's that, and then when you're trying to source the seat belt, if you're anything like me, you're having a heck of a time. This section of the seat belt is known as the retractor. There's a couple things that we wanna kinda look at to make sure that the seat belt hasn't been in an accident. One, this shouldn't rattle. Cool, doesn't rattle. Two, this part shouldn't be all bunched up. If it's all bunched up, then it's been in an accident and it's worthless to us. Um, but the computer will know that right away because it'll show as an open circuit. Uh, as soon as this thing deploys, it's an open circuit. And then 
these little guys are pretty standard throughout the automotive industry. They're basically all the same type of connector. Sorry, it's hard to do this one-handed. Okay, so a note about this connector is this circuit will show open until this tab gets closed. How do I know that? Well, I did, I did an airbag and a seat, put the whole seat back together, forgot to close this tab, went to clear codes, wouldn't clear out, showing as an open. So make sure you close that tab. Okay, it's been a few minutes with the, uh, the battery, so let's get started on this job. All right, folks, so where I like to start, there's this little tab up here that says airbag. I'll just pop this guy loose. And you'll see down in there, it's either a seven or an eight mil. I like to use a magnetic socket for this because this little nut, no, not an eight. This little nut, once you get it loose, it will want to fall all the way down and then it'll be a nightmare to find. So if you don't have magnetic sockets, yeah, this takes a seven mil. If you don't have magnetic sockets, just make sure to have a magnet nearby. And then this should just pretty much pop off. I hate doing interior work. So the seatbelt that we're replacing has been de deployed, so you'll notice, I mean, this thing's locked up. I've probably been in the way the entire shot, but it's okay. So for this bottom one, you really just want it out of the way. That's all we need to do. Okay, then you'll see we'll need some Torx. We'll have a Torx up here, a Torx down here, and I think there is one other fastener. Yeah, then there's this like, 10 mil. Yeah, I think our retractor comes with this assembly, so we just need to pull it here. We might have to get this one out of the way to get to the nut uh, that's down here. Let me grab some Torx. Okay, T50. And this one, same for that one. Okay, and this is just called a cat claw. Makes dealing with plastic tabs basically a dream. I don't know if we might have to salvage that little plastic tab. Okay, this next part's gonna be really difficult to show. But for down here, we just have our SRS connector. We have another Torx, I imagine it's probably a T50 or T55, and then this fastener here, and then that will release the retractor. So I'm just going to do that. All right, so we got the retractor portion out. So this fastener here is a T50, and I just used a stubby version with a ratchet, and that allowed me to squeeze down there. And then for the connector itself, I just used a 90 degree pick. Cool, so that's kind of the first portion for this job, is really just getting that retractor side out. Now this next part is gonna be a little bit tricky. If you're having trouble with the seat, 
this really confused me the first time is the seat just has these two fasteners in the back and then it's like hooks in the front so there's no fasteners in the front of the seat i've never seen that before usually it's you know four fasteners always but on these seats it's just the two rear and then you can kind of unhook it and hook it up some of this stuff is going to be hard to show you basically we're going to want to unhook this flap from what i remember and that should allow us access to uh, slide off or at least gain access to that portion of it. To get this flap up, it's just these two clips right here that are strapped from the underside. You'll unclip those, lift up the strap, and then you'll see on this side, there's a Torx fastener. Um, what size does it take? T25 Torx, what you'll do, I don't know if you can notice that little bar slides into there. So once you get that fastener released, you'll lift up till you get unhooked from there and then push forward. And now you can see I have access to this bottom clamp down here. So It'll just be that fastener down there. I imagine a T50 and this little guy right here. And then you have this little cover that was just covering up that guy. That guy is pretty easy to get out of the way. So next part, we'll remove that. All right, so when everything's all said and done, <laughs> should look kind of like this. The fastener for this portion was a T45 and the only way to get it out, the only way to have access to that T45, I released those two bolts like I was talking about earlier, and then I just used the old retractor to prop up the seat, and that was enough clearance to get to that T45. So yeah, the whole assembly is out now, and you might be wondering how to slide it all out of there with a little bit of patience and a little bit of finagling you can slide the buckle, this portion, that all out through this slide here. It's tight, but you, you can do it. Let's see, one more note. This is not a sponsor, but for cleanup afterwards, I use this stuff here because you'll probably end up getting, you know, this is really nice interior and it's very light colored. So I want to clean up any kind of fingerprints or shoe marks or anything that was left behind. So you'll just want to re restall in, in the reverse order. Make sure to torque everything to factory spec because this is part of a safety system and you do not want it to fail when you need it the most. Um, so we'll put it all back together, put the hook the battery back up. We'll check in with the SRS system, make sure it's happy with the new seat belt. Take it for a quick little toot around the neighborhood, make sure everything's good. Oh yeah, and we have that exhaust leak that we need to find. So let's do that before we test drive it and get the exhaust super hot. All right, so got everything back together. You know, I wanna make sure this thing slides up and down the way it's supposed to. The belt retracts. Now you might be worried when you get a seat belt from the junker or whatever and it's not coming out. I don't know what kind of black magic in those they have in those things, but until the retractor is like installed, like the belt won't move. I don't I don't know why. I don't get it. Make sure it's clipped in, wiped down. Make sure you don't forget any tools, especially if it's a customer's car. Been hearing a lot of stories of that lately. Customers do not like it when you leave tools in there because to them it gives them an impression that you're a sloppy mechanic. You want to check all your seam lines. Check all your seam lines all the way around up top. You know, just take a minute, make sure everything looks flush and good. It's the wrong color seatbelt, I know, but beggars can't be choosers. It took me like a month to get that one. Make sure everything's tightened down. Let's uh, hook back up the battery, see if the computer's happy with the belt that we put in, and then we'll check for this exhaust leak. Okay, so I just went in to the inflatable restraint module. I know, I, I call it the SRS module. Uh, but manufacturers have different names for it. Um, so this, they call the inflatable restraint module. Cleared out the history codes for the passenger side seatbelt. We're in the key on, engine off position, rescan for codes. 
and no trouble codes. So that tells me that the computer is happy with the seatbelt that we put in and this customer shouldn't have any problems. So that handles that side. Uh, time for lunch and then uh, let's hunt down this exhaust leak. All right, folks, exhaust leak time. How do you find exhaust leaks or vacuum leaks? Well, you can use a smoke machine. I'll show you the one I have. It served me quite well over the years. It's this All Tool SDT 206. So I've got it hooked up into the tailpipe, but since it's obviously a dual exhaust, I've got this side plugged up. And now we've just basically wait. So it's gonna fill and pressurize our exhaust system with smoke. And then we're just gonna wait and see. And if you guys like my shirt, my friend makes them for me. So hit me up in the comments. We'll try to get you a shirt. I don't know how the sound is. Sorry, my neighbor's getting his carpets cleaned. Um, something I like to use too when I'm finding exhaust leaks is a spotlight. It makes it kind of easier to pinpoint exactly where the leak's coming. So I've got the cover off. It took a T30 to get the cover off. And what I've seen before is even though the engine is transverse, the way that they're labeled is just imagine the front of the engine facing this way. So this is still our left side and this should be our right side. At least from what I've come across um, with other transverse V6s and the way that they were labeled. It took a while to kind of figure that out. But I'm sure that stands true with this. Um, make sure when you're doing your smoke test to do it in a ventilated area. I got the garage door open because you really don't want to be breathing this crap in. Okay, it looks like my plug might not have worked as well. Oh, we're spitting out right there. Sometimes there's little drain holes. What you would do in an ideal situation is you would just remove, you know, I'm not worried about any leaks past the catalytic converter, but sometimes there's little drain holes or little rust holes. You can see, we got that going on right there. I've got this metallic tape that sometimes works. Plugging this up. We'll keep our eyes out. But I think this, this smoke tester takes like baby oil or mineral oil. I think mineral oil, yeah. I don't know. Whatever they recommend, who cares? Oh so yeah, and then you just pretty much wait pretty potent so you can really smell when the leaks come in. Let's check, see if there's any other pinholes. Looks like so far we're good. Another thing that I've noticed, if you have a really long exhaust system, like I was trying to do this on a, like a 2018 Dodge Ram the other day. If the exhaust is super long, that smoke will condense and return back into liquid as it cools down and it won't make it all the way to the exhaust. So something to keep in mind. But I'll keep this running, I'll check back in. All right, so that plan didn't work. So we went to plan B and split the difference. There was too many holes and the exhaust just seemed too long. So you'll notice I'm at the end of the cat. As a mechanic, I only care about exhaust leaks from the end of the cat back or at least from where your downstream O2 sensor is and back uh, for emissions purposes. Anything outside of that I could really care less. But a tip that I found, I did a lot of exhaust work this summer on a lot of RVs, big exhaust systems that were real rusty. And something that I've been trying that I've having a lot of success with is instead of, instead of using a standard impact socket on an, an exhaust bolt, I've been using these extractors this sits by gear wrench but i just go straight for the extractor and i use an impact so it's making sure to hammer down that that uh extraction and look at how clean that came out it's just got a couple grooves in it i feel like if i would have used a normal impact socket it would just rounded the crap out of that thing so yeah i've been using the extractors i've been having a lot of luck with them let's turn this machine back on 
gotta hook it up to the battery and then uh, I'll try round two but that's just how it goes you know being a tech it's really all about options option A option B option C if you're having a really bad day you're probably on option E which is burn the car down and collect the insurance but I'm joking don't do that okay we'll turn our smoke machine back on we're hooked up to that exhaust do we have a yeah we got a light and that stuff this stuff stinks and then we'll wait all right folks we found our leak enhance see that smoke so left hand side which is good news for me and the customer because that gasket should be relatively easy to knock out I was really hope glad it's not on that back side because that would be a total pain but cool that shouldn't be very expensive of a uh, of a quote for her so I'll get that over to her and then her invoice for the seatbelt all right folks well there you have it that was another adventure in the garage if you have any questions about your XTS let me know maybe I could try to help you out but yeah it seems like really the biggest thing on this thing is the lower control arms if you're still if you have a clunk you might even want to address try doing the lower control arms first they're pretty straightforward I think the only thing that you guys will struggle with is the torque rating is pretty high I think one of the main bolts on there is like 175 foot-pounds or something don't quote me on that but uh, some of the torque ratings are kind of high for the control arms but that should help resolve your clunk um, struts are pretty straightforward I got you guys that tool number if you have a small evap leak it's most likely that evap purge solenoid and if your seat belts go off because your customer is driving like crazy and hits a bump in the car thought it was an accident well that's how you do your seat belt the driver's side is is identical to the passenger so thanks for coming on another adventure in the garage please uh, comment like subscribe and share if you like this and I'll catch you guys on the next adventure